now we move to the last topic uh, of today uh, with Patrick Papstorf, Senior Advisor to the Digital Euro Rulebook Development Unit. And he will talk about the harmonization of standards for distributing a digital euro with the scheme rulebook. So also, also in theme. The floor is yours, Patrick. Thanks a lot, Erika, and good morning to all of you. So my name is Patrick Papstorff. Um, I am a senior advisor here, specifically looking after um, the rule book development. And um, so I have the pleasure this morning to speak to you specifically about the rule book. And um, we framed it under the heading Working Towards Harmonization, Standards for Distributing a Digital Euro. Um, so I hope I'm going to touch upon in some, of, some of the questions that were already raised in the chat. Um, and um, before I go ahead, let me just check, Erika, you hear me well? I guess no answer could mean no or a yes. I assume it is a yes. No, we so, can hear you well. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. Um, if you go to, to the first slide, so um, of course you all um, um, have heard this morning about the digital euro scheme. Um, and that we're preparing it um, in order to ensure harmonization. So what is a scheme? Um, actually, the, the definition of a scheme, um, at least in the, in the, in, in, in the EU area, is um, a scheme consists of a single set of rules, standards, and procedures. And um, where to find those set of rules, standards, and procedures? Well, therefore, we have the rule book, the draft rule book for the digital EU scheme. And this rule book is quite an important delivery, of course, for, um, for the whole ecosystem, for all those um, taking part in the digital EU ecosystem. Um, and specifically, um, the rule book um, provides um, those um, rules, standard procedures, and I will not always say this now because of a very long phrase, um, but really specifically applies, of course, to intermediaries. Intermediaries are, are banks and other supervised PSPs. And um, specifically, the rule book looks at um, the core functions that are provided. These are the access management, the liquidity management, and the transaction management. Uh, what does it mean, access management, specifically um, the onboarding um, of, of, of a, of a, of a um, user or the offboarding of a user, but also lifecycle management, linking of the Chileo account to a commercial bank account um, um, and, and further actions. What does liquidity management mean? Liquidity management means the actions of funding and defunding, um, as well as um, to use uh, the waterfall functionality. So this will also be described in the rule book. And transaction management means, of course, um, the ability to make and receive um, payments in the digital euro um, around the clock, anytime, um, uh, following the use cases that Evelyn mentioned earlier. Um, so. Um, whether it's at the point of sale um, for online offline transactions, whether it's for e-commerce and online transactions, um, or whether it's P2P yes, or online or offline. So all these aspects um, shall be covered in the rule book um, in, a, in a great um, in extent. I will come to this in, a, in further detail soon. Um, and with that, we will ensure with the rule book and to which um, um, the participants intermediaries will be bound to, with that we will ensure a common and harmonized user experience and perception of digital euro payments, irrespective of the country where a payment is made or irrespective of the intermediary that is used. Now the question is, um, we know where to find these rules, namely in the rule book, uh, but who is preparing the rule book? Well, here we, we have um, a dedicated group. Um, so we are developing the rule book with a group. This group is called the Rule Book Development Group, the RDG. Um, and actually tomorrow we have the next meeting of the RDG. Um, I will say something and, and of course more about the RDG on the next slide. When we do our work, there are a number of key guiding principles. Um, and I mentioned here um, uh, some main ones. Of course, we follow in the works the design choices of the governing council. Um, we always need to keep in mind that um, the solutions are attractive to all actors, specifically for the users. Um, very important, the aspect that also came out in the chat that we leverage and progress on existing standards to the degree that is possible and to the largest extent. And of course, that we also enable market innovation by the um, different actors based on this view being a basic mean of payment. Now, one important aspect that I also should mention when I speak about the rule book 
is that the draft rule book needs to be sufficiently flexible and will be sufficiently flexible to accommodate for any future adjustments that may be required from the draft um, legislation on the digital euro. If you go to the next slide, here I present now a little bit more about the rule book development group, the RDG. So the RDG is um, a very active body um, and had the heterogeneous body bringing together high expertise in payments from different sides. Um, at large, one could say that it presents society because if you look at the composition, it may be sometimes a little difficult to see, um, but we are composed of private sector representatives and public sector representatives. Let me start with the private sector. Here you see specifically um, the associations that are represented um, in, the, in the RDG. So you will find associations that represent consumers, um, that represent the retailers, that represent the intermediaries, um, whether these are banks or non-banks, but they need to be supervised. So you see the private sector is um, represented from different angles, and that's also very important for our work and very helpful for our work. But of course, we are also there from the public sector, especially from the from the youth system side. So um, the youth system, meaning not only the ECB, but of course also the national central banks who are forming with us together the youth system. So we have the central bank representatives, as well as we have observers, observers from the um, through representation that we invite uh, from the parliament, from the commission, as well as from the presidency for the Council of the EU. So you see a very broad group that we have set up. And as said, this group meets every month. Um, and if you want to have further information about the RDG, and um, you will find also a number of links in my presentation underlining the, the importance of transparency of our work. Um, so you find on the website, you find a link to the, to the rule book as well as to the RDG. And for instance, you see also the nominees that we have and the, the members of the RDG that we have um, confirmed um, last year because the RDG was put in place last year. If we go ahead to the next slide, please. So when we speak about transparency, it's not only transparency about um, the participants of the group, but specifically also transparency about the work progress that we do. Um, and I would like to highlight uh, three reports specifically. And so there was one report, so the first report um, in June last year, a further one at the beginning of the year, and one that is still still warm, the paper is still warm from the printing, um, and that was um, just issued last, last week. Um, and so the first report gave a bit of an outline of the work that we are doing and how we're going to structure the work. The report at the beginning of the year, and I can really recommend you um, to, to have a look at, at this report, was already rich in content by providing um, the list of content of the, 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 the envisaged list of content of the rule book, um, providing information about high level flows, um, for instance, and further information on several sections of the rule book that were already advanced. And next to this report, we had also um, the draft, the first draft of the rule book, the so-called intermediate draft. And I will say a little bit more about this in a second. This year, um, so last week, we also published um, the, the third report on the RDG work. Um, here we um, provide um, further information, in particular on two main streams of work. The so one stream was the work that we did in view of the review process of the initial draft. And on this, I will say a little more. And a second, on the further work that we did. Um, and when we work with the RDG, what does that mean? Um, we create work streams. So we're working together uh, with market participants in work streams um, where we can then elaborate um, closer on, on the different topics. Um, and, and these um, um, work streams then um, develop a topic, propose it to the, to the RDG. Um, these um, will then be um, these contributions will then be um, taken into the last draft of the rule book um, and so forth and so on. Um, but we did specifically, um, and you see this on the bottom of the slide. What we did specifically, we had the first comprehensive version of a rule book available in January this year. So we gave this version to the RDG for um, for review, um, a, a review of the entirety of the, of, the, of the draft because it helps to see the consistency across the different parts and it gave more time to also allow the RDG members to get in touch with the associations. 
Now we had um, the work on reviewing all the comments that we received um, and we are addressing them now in the future draft of the rulebook. Besides that, we're working on the new parts of the rulebook that were not covered yet. So it's quite an iterative um, process that we are running. If you go to the next slide, please. So with this slide, I just want to show you the, um, the richness of working together um, with the market participants in the RDG. Um, so as I said, we shared the, the first intermediate draft with the group at the beginning of the year. Um, the colleagues had a chance to look into it in its entirety and also to um, consult um, their, 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 their colleagues within the associations. And we got quite a number of comments back, more than 2,000 comments that help us now to further refine and further define the rule book. Um, I should say not all these, these comments um, must lead to changes of the rule book because, of course, there were some duplicative uh, comments. Um, there were some comments that just um, required a clarification, but still um, a high number of the comments we can take on board in the drafting of the rulebook. And very important, we don't leave any comment unanswered. We developed a so-called traceability matrix that allows the RDG members to really see each of the comment and how it has been addressed, which is, of course is very important. And when we look at these, uh, at these numbers, and I don't go through them in detail, but um, specific um, comments were received on, um, on the user journeys and the end-to-end -end flows. And on this, we'll come back a little later. But of course, these were two very important um, aspects um, where we received a lot of comments. If we go ahead, please. Um, so the, the rule book indeed covers a wide range of topics and it has to because it's um, the rule book of, this, of the scheme. And we, are, we need to move from a higher level to more granular aspects um, over time. So. I show you here the envisage table of the content of the draft rule book. Um, the first, the blue box, is the one um, as we prepared it and shared it in January this year. So you see here um, it covers the scope and the interplay, the function operational model. Um, it also has already foreseen parts on adherence and the technical scheme requirements, as well as um, a glossary of defined terms and conditions and annexes, very important. First annexes covering user journeys and detailed end-to-end detailed -end flows. Now we already indicated in January that um, this was a draft um, table of content and that we're gonna work on a further extended draft table of content. And that's what we are doing now. And you see in the pink box, you see here um, some additional areas that we are um, looking at. For instance, minimum UX, user experience standards, um, interface standards and specifications, risk management, scheme management, um, as well as further work in the annexes, for instance, on branding standards or uh, technical uh, um, implementation specifications. So a number of aspects that we are working on um, together with, 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 um, with the market in the RDG. If you could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So of course, um, for the scheme to to function well, it requires, as always, an orchestrated interaction between all the actors. And we already provided in the in the first um, um, we, in the second report that we gave at the beginning of the year, um, the picture to the left, um, of course, a high level picture, but helping to scope the so the rule book. Um, of course, you have the relations between payer and payees that is outside the the rule book. Um, and the rule book specifically bounds the intermediaries, the intermediaries of the payer and of the payee. So these are, um, there was a question before. So here we speak about supervised um, PSPs. And um, in the center, there is the back end, um, not the center, in the center of that picture, there's a back end, uh, the back end, the desk, the digital service platform, um, and the target services behind that. Um, and in addition, of course, there's a link between the intermediaries and the payee and payee. While this is not um, the direct scope of the rule book, of course, the requirements of the rule book for of the scheme um, should then also be reflected by the intermediaries in their terms and conditions towards the users. We also further worked on a more technical requirements description and the functional arch architecture of, of how we um, would work together. And you see on the right-hand slide, you see the, the architecture um, um, as we, we, we currently um, um, envisage it. 
So you have different domains. You have the backend domain um, to the right. Then you move into the domain of intermediaries, and then further to the domain of um, of the um, individual as end user or the business um, as as end user. Um, and of course, there are interfaces to be considered um, across all those um, domains. And that, of course, is designing and 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 leading our work um, on implementation specifications, as you will see in a moment. If we can go to the next slide, please. So I mentioned that a word that we work together with the RDG by means of um, by means of work streams. So work streams bring together um, experts from the market and allowing us to to discuss uh, in depth and the, the various topics. Um, and you will also find on the website um, the calls that we make for work streams. Um, so just for, um, for your information, this year we started off seven new work streams with market participants. And um, this slide gives you an overview of the work streams. So um, do not consider so much um, the letters and the numbers at the beginning. I'm not sure that how helpful they are. They are helpful for our work, but maybe not for you. Um, but it gives a feeling of where we are with, um, with the different work streams. Um, so you see um, the little pink uh, wheel. These are in progress. The calendar means that they are planned. So we are, um, of course, in the process of a of number of, of um, elaborations on, on, on the work streams. To give you a very light and brief overview, um, so um, identification and authentication, um, this specifically um, related to, to the end users, um, um, identification, um, that was entered already before um, by, by Evelyn and Ulrich. Um, it also looks at the aspects of authentication um, and also um, assessing those means of authentication with the requirements of inclusiveness and accessibility, for instance. It looked also at the structure of the Dean. So a number of work um, has been taking place in the work stream on identification and authentication with market experts. Minimum user experiences, um, A2, this is a work stream that is running at the moment. Um, here we um, look at the important area of, of user experiences, um, defining user, user guidelines and trying from this to identify what is the minimum user experience that we need to, to ensure and ask for to, to really ensure that the use of the digital EU feels common, as I said at the beginning, and harmonized across the different, um, across, the, um, across all the use cases and, and any places. We are also working on, on the branding, the branding standards, this is in planning, um, so the branding of the digital EU and how uh, to reflect this in the different um, payment, payment cases. Um, certification and approval framework. Here we take um, a device-centric view. Um, very important, we try to identify and be identifying what are the different standards for certification and, um, and to then further bring this into um, a testing requirements, um, work on, on, ongoing here. Technical scheme requirements. Um, the picture I showed you before with the domains and the, the link to the um, between the domains, the interfaces um, was developed by, by this work stream, um, including the different the services that you find under each domain. Risk management, um, we have been starting and we are currently planning the next sprint. Um, risk management, of course, covering aspects like operational resilience, um, including cyber resilience, covering aspects of, of, um, of, of fraud, for instance. Scheme compatibility, um, also an important work stream and several questions were on, on this aspect um, in, in the chat on the standards. And here I would like to refer you specifically to the progress report at the beginning of the year. And then we have four work streams um, covering um, what we call implementation specifications. So really outlining in detail so the requirements in order to um, um, so reflecting the flows, the different business rules that have to be um, applied, what are the minimum user experience standards. So these will bring together the information from the different work streams to kind of be um, comprehensive specifications about the implementation at the different level of the domains. Um, yeah, it's all this work we do with the RDG members in the work streams. So, um, I'm really thankful for actually for the for the colleagues who are with us in the work streams and in the RDG. If you move forward to the next slide, please. 
Yeah, so this is an example of a user journey or end-to-end -end flow. And there are many more um, around um, 100 of, of user journeys um, that colleagues are working on. Uh, here we, we picked one to, to give an illustration of what is a user journey. So a user journey looks from a user perspective. Um, and so what would be the what the user would, would see and, and should experience. And from this, as said earlier, we derive what are the minimum user experience standards. Um, whereas we also work at the same time on the end-to-end -end flows. The end-to-end -end flows are not so visible to the user or actually not visible to the user because that is um, the actions that are required from end-to-end -end regarding all the participants that are involved. So starting from the user, including the intermediary, but also including the back end. And it's, of course, not only in terms of flowcharts, as it's shown here, but also uh, described further and, and in very detail of what those steps are and what the different requirements are. Um, so this is a work um, ongoing, and this, of course, is um, a key aspect of the rulebook. If we go to the next slide, what is going to come? Um, of course, we are in the work streams as shown, and it's a um, work in progress. So we will continue the work with the market participants. We um, will elaborate further and develop the sections in the rule book um, with the RDG and also taking on board the comments that we received from the RDG. As I said, the next meeting is already tomorrow and we do it every month. Um, we will provide a new progress report on the work of the RDG in the first quarter of 25. Um, and again, I can only invite you to look at those reports because um, they provide further information uh, addressing several of the questions that were asked in the chat. And the draft rule book in itself, and that's very important, um, we aim to complete in the preparation phase to, 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 to by that time to have a draft rule book that is complete, covering all the different areas that were shown in the list of content. Many thanks for your um for your time to follow this presentation and then um, i stop here thank you thank you so much patrick um this topic is really important one the rule book will indeed lay the basis for digital euro and harmonization across europe and uh it was also nice to see that we had a few topic a few questions quite a few also also on this topic so um i'll <clears throat> I'll read a few of them. So first, um, will there be an additional licensing regi regime for digital euro intermediaries, or will all already licensed PSP banks and non-banks be allowed to become digital euro intermediary? So thanks a lot for the question. Um, a good question, important question. So um, we are not um, providing a new licensing regime. Um, so the licensing is not ban, done by the Digital Euro project, um, um, but uh, we will. Um, um, our requirement is that we interact with PSPs that are supervised, so PSPs, banks, um, or non-banks, um, according to the respective EU regulations slash um, uh, directives. Um, so no new licensing regime from us. However, what we will um, need to have is, of course. Um, 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 to ensure that all the members and the intermediaries are, are ready to interact with us. So, but this is of course not a licensing, but um, ensuring that the readiness um, for being able to be the intermediate um, um, for the digital year, so that they have done so the testing and can provide the functionalities. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Alexander Christoph. Will the digital euro rulebook be governed by EPC, such as the SIPA rulebooks? Um, yeah, again, um, a good question. You have seen the list of content um, that we have in area on, on scheme governance. Um, so we are still discussing um, the scheme governance aspects. Um, but of course, each scheme, and that's uh, potentially, I should have said at the beginning when defining a scheme, each scheme has a governing um, authority so a governing body for the scheme to take care to take care that the rules of the of the scheme are, are respected. Um, so in in this case, um, uh, that is comparable to to any other scheme that also has governance bodies. Um, um, so this is work and on, on, um, that is currently um, um, ongoing. 
Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Next one from Christian Changer. By when is expected the technical standard specifications for bank your system communication will be drafted, drafted, expected based on API? Yeah, good question. And um, of course, you saw my last slide, I said, like, we want to have the draft rule book um, finalized um, um, by the end of the preparation phase. So that is the aim for the draft, draft rule book. So we are currently um, looking very deeply into, um, into the, the different aspects that need to be available um, and by when, and we do this together uh, with discussions in the, in the, in the RDG um, and will of course also um, communicate this accordingly. Great, thank you. Um, next one. <clears throat> so related to the slide, on chart 36, you show the digital euro ecosystem. What role is there for private payment service providers in addition to the banks of the payer and the payee? Uh, that's probably um, for, I'm not sure that is the answer, that is a question for the rule book guy, uh, because we, we put it into place. But of course, um, um, as, as mentioned earlier, um, we had this guiding, guiding principles and um, the market um, um, is invited to innovate further on, on the basic means of, of the digital euro. And um, we are uh, facilitating this um, specifically through developing the rule book, through developing and using existing standards um, so this will allow um, and gives the um, opportunity um, to be innovative and to provide further services on top. Um, what those are, I would say this, I would leave to the to the market to come up with, but of course, um, it's it's also an integral part of our project. Okay, thank you. Next question. <clears throat> we still have a few minutes, so we'll take a few a few more. Um, do you consider the scenario where digital euro wallet is held in a different institution than the commercial bank account and its consequences on the compensation system? This is a bit of a broad question. Can, can, you, can you read it again? I'm sorry. Yes, of course. Do you consider the scenario where the digital euro wallet is held in a different institution than the commercial bank account? and its consequences on the compensation system. Um, so I would not like to speak about the consequences, but um, um, up front, um, the, the possibility is, is there so that, uh, that uh, the wallet could be held differently from, um, um, from where the um, digital euro account is held. Yes. Uh, maybe one uh, last one before we pass to the closing remarks. Will regular consumers be involved in the drafting of the rule book? That is, um, again, a very important point. Um, and um, we said be before, and I hope it was clear that our main objective when we are drafting the rule book is, of course, the user. Um, so we are very user user centric. So it must be when we speak about user experiences, user journeys. It's always the users underlined. So um, the focus on the users is is, is really key. And um, that's also why in the RDG itself. So in the group that is uh, helping us with the drafting of the rulebook, that in this group we have consumers represented by by two associations. And um, I can also share that. Um, so the colleagues are very active members of, of the RDG and participate in any group in order to represent the views of users. And they are challenging. They're challenging all, all our views. And that's also very important. Thanks for the question. Great. Thank you, Patrick. Then maybe um, just to recap, because we had a question, when will the new draft of the rulebook be published? So maybe you can uh, close. So we can take this last one and uh, you can close recapping. Yes, yeah, thanks. And that is not an, an easy one. Um, <laughs> so we are currently um, working on the on the draft. Um, 
So um, we are working with the RDG, so it's available to the RDG members. Um, we will bring the, the rule book according to the, the current planning. Um, um, we will have it ready um, towards the end of the preparation phase and then um, afterwards um, um, the publication, I would see. But uh, first we need to, to get it ready to, to, to have a, a sound um, setup to be comprehensive enough in the rule book to be sure about its quality, about its consistency, that we cover all the fields. Uh, we'll bring it forward um, to, to the governing council of the ECB, to our decision makers uh, at the end of the preparation phase. And then afterwards, uh, it shall get ready for publication.